Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Shane. For those who are new, welcome back. If you're returning, on the day of eight-month-old Janaya's funeral, her father sat behind bars. He faced accusations of essaying and unaliving his daughter. James Salt Marshall is the man we're talking about, and can you imagine the pain that he felt that day sitting in jail, even more so knowing he was an innocent man? James and Janaya lived together in an Alpine motel in Michigan after winning custody of his daughter. On the fateful date of April 20th, 22nd, 2018, Janiyah was being particularly fussy. She was refusing her bottle, she was refusing a nap. If you're a parent or an aunt or uncle or just babysit young kids, you know that it, it's not, every day is not smooth sailing. On top of dealing with a cranky child as fate would have it, James forgot his pack and play at a cousin's house where his daughter would be put down to sleep. Remember that they're at a motel, so it's not like he has, you know, a full crib set up or something, so typically you might set up a pack and play of some sort and this day he didn't have it. It seemed like one of those days where everything is working against you and James was just having one of those days because not only did he forget the pack and play, now his car stopped running that morning so it's not like he could just run out and go get it. Exhausted, James finally got Janiyah to start settling down. He changed her diaper and then he held her until she fell asleep. Again, no pack and play to put her down so it's either put her in the bed or hold her. Exhausted from all the bad luck he was having, that day, James took a seat on the bed with his daughter as she drifted off to sleep in his arms, but inadvertently, he ended up falling asleep himself. You might think you know where the story is going, but it gets wild, so hold on. When James woke up, his first thought was to check on his daughter, and she was lying on the bed next to him, but she wasn't breathing. As a panicked parent, James's first thought was to call 911 and tell the dispatcher that his daughter was unresponsive and not breathing. Paramedics brought her to an ER, but she ended up being transported to the Children's Hospital in Michigan, near Detroit. When asked, James explained to a doctor who happened to be Dr. Stephanie Wright that he was just holding his daughter and passed out from exhaustion, and when he woke up, she was unresponsive. This happens way more than I think. I think we think it does. It is, that was like the scariest part about having such a young child. It was SIDS and asphyxiation, it like it, co-sleeping was, anyway. What he failed to mention was that he was holding her at the time and I don't know, maybe just he was so overwhelmed from his daughter and worried about her, I don't know, he just didn't tell her that at that moment. Upon examining Janaya, the doctors were finding signs on the infant that were not consistent with the father's story. Trigger warning as I explain what some of these findings were because this was a hard one to uh, uh, read about, but I said the findings included a large um, bleeding rectal tear. I don't know I don't know what YouTube's going to clock me for. I'm just going to have to go for it at this point. Upon finding this, the doctors ended up calling CPS to report her suspicions of child a B U U S E. I'll, I'll try my hardest. Additional doctors were even called in to basically confirm the first doctor's suspicions and it really wasn't looking good for James because the doctors started reporting that there were even more injuries. A doctor by the name of Scott Lang Langenberg? Langenberg? Uh, who who was another doctor at this hospital. He ended up texting a lieutenant by the name of Jeffrey Wardes. Ward I don't think the T, I'll put it here, I don't think the T is pronounced Ward is. The baby was reported to have skull fractures, um, brain swelling on the CT scan, which showed that the baby was most likely going to meet the criteria of brain death. Um, the baby had skull fractures. The baby was also reported to have lung bruising and lacerations. There were also some doctors who wanted to speculate that there were signs of shaken baby syndrome. The doctors concluded that this was all non-accidental trauma, that this was done on purpose. So detectives obviously start questioning James. James, you came to us and just told her there was pox possible asphyxiation. Now we're finding lacerations, the bleeding um, rectum, uh, a lot more than what you came to us. So your story is looking extremely suspicious. James told Detective Munson, quote, my daughter was fine. We went to sleep. I wake up and she is dead because I suffocated her too much in the middle of my sleep. I held her too close, I just didn't want her to fall off the bed, man. Saul Marshall was confused, however, when the detective brought up the un 
other injuries reported to be found on the child. When the detective questioned Salt Marshall about the other injuries that were found on the child, his first initial reaction was to say, what injuries? He told Munson that she might have shaken baby syndrome because when he woke up and his daughter wasn't breathing, he shook her to try to wake her. He also said she could have slipped out of his hands and hit her head while he was trying to perform CPR. So this just seems like a panicked father, like, oh my God, I was trying to just save my kid and I caused all these other injuries. Like, I really think he's clueless. I really think he's clueless about what they're really trying to allude to here because he claims to have no knowledge of the rectal injuries whatsoever. But it didn't really matter right then and there because he was arrested. He ended up spending the next week in jail awaiting for his arrangement. At this hearing, he learned the charges against him and he missed his opportunity to say goodbye because on April 23rd, 2018 at 8.36 a.m., Janaya was declared brain dead. And to add insult to injury, even though he posted bail, he was forbidden to make contact with his kids, resulting in him missing his funeral for his daughter. Two months, this irks me, this irks me. Two months later, things changed. <sighs> An autopsy was performed on the child and it came back inconsistent with the doctor's findings. Charged, 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 put away for life, don't care. Are you serious? The medical examiner did not find brain injuries or no sign of the skull fracture. The, the skull fracture that they're referring to was a small laceration. Oh, and what of the rectal tear? Oh, that was constipation. Oh, the, the audacity. And the shaking baby syndrome? Is there something? No? Nope. No, ba no shaken baby syndrome. The autopsy reported that the cause of death was most likely due to accidental asphyxi asphyxiation. I am struggling with that word today. Do you understand what they did? What they... <clears throat> so I want to know what he's doing now. I want to know. Oh. I want to know where James is at now. So I'm just trying to find some information. Because it was still due to accidental asphyxiation, I can imagine that he would still be um, possibly charged with manslaughter. But I think, I'd imagine that they'd, if you didn't let this poor man go after everything that you put him through, I'm trying to just find where he's at now. I'm finding an article online that just says, 22-year-old father accused of graping an unaliving eight-month-old daughter cleared from all charges. So, if that's the case, and they've cleared him, that's the least that they could do. Uh, he was clearly failed, and I don't know, I hope that every single one of those doctors' titles are stripped painfully away from them because what they did was so egregious, and I can't even uh, begin to fathom not only having to lose your daughter, but then having to literally be blamed for it. I found a couple articles saying that all of the charges were dropped on this 22 year old father. And I hope every single doctor that was involved in this, like, why would you? He had no chance without a lawyer of not being like, are you serious? <laughs> he sobbed crying out that he had never done anything to harm his daughter. Left alone with her after his wife went to work, Marshall discovered Janaya unresponsive, performing CPR until emergency services arrived. Janaya tragically passed away after being rushed to the hospital. Public opinion was against him until a forensic report revealed the truth. Janaya had not suffered any physical abuse. Marshall had accidentally rolled onto her in his sleep. The charges against Marshall were subsequently dropped. Please let me know what you think down below. Also, while you're down there, let me know if there are any other cases you want me to cover. I do have a really, really fascinating Micah Miller update coming. We're going to answer some questions I've had before. We're going to go into more details. We're going to look into this sermon where literally this guy, ah, uh, you have no, subscribe so you don't miss it. And I will see you guys in my next one.